Here's what I propose. The Ring Fit Challenge. <laughs> I'm gonna play this game an hour a day for 30 days. See if I can actually get into shape with this thing, even just a little bit. It should take me and anyone else that wants to do this with me all the way up to Thanksgiving, so then we can ruin our diet and exercise by eating a load of marshmallow sweet potatoes. <laughs> I think he's just stalling at this point. We want more Ring Fit Adventure, Wood. And another thing, where the hell are Wood's Ring Fit Adventure videos? I was looking forward to that series and he scammed me. Where are those videos? Hey, Wood? No, I think Wood just forgot. Hey, you know what? Where is that Ring Fit video Wood said he was gonna do? I think Beat Em Ups lied about that Ring Fit video. All right, guys, this is the moment I actually, I've been waiting to weigh myself, so I am very nervous. I gained weight? You're not standing on anything. We don't have a scale. Yeah, we don't have a scale, um, but it's kind of for more dramatic effect for, for the video. Ah. So. Just pretend there's a scale. You know I've gained weight. You can see the... <clears throat> all right, let's... Uh... Yeah, all right. So uh, I have a lot of things to talk about today. I want to go through the state of play we just had with PlayStation. I want to talk about the Indie World Direct thing we just had that was freaking awesome. I want to talk about some other random news in the gaming world. This is a gaming beat-em-ups news. But before all of that, I do have... An apology? A somewhat apology. Like, I am sorry, but at the same time, once you hear this... <laughs> and it's about, um, the Ring Fit. I know a lot of you guys have been asking, whatever happened to my Ring Fit challenge? As some of you know, I reviewed the Ring Fit. I love this thing. I think it's awesome. And at the end of my video, I, I, I proposed a challenge, a Ring Fit challenge. It was a really great idea that I was really passionate about, really excited about, and yet... It went all horribly wrong. And I know it's gonna be disappointing for a lot of you, but let me get through this. And I don't, it, it's, it's a lot to take in and I don't wanna bum everyone out too much. So I'm gonna keep this quick and moving so we can get into the actual video and talk about some video games. And I don't know how much I wanna say because some of it is quite embarrassing while at the same time just being normal stuff you have to deal with in normal life, I guess. So I was honestly really passionate about doing this. I was committed and I was really excited. And, and I got three days into it. I, I did it for three days. The first day I did it for an hour, the next day 45 minutes, and the next day 40 minutes because this thing was kicking my butt and every day was harder than the day before it. And then on the fourth day, uh, on the fourth day I had some friends over and we were sitting down on the, well, I was sitting down on the floor and my back randomly started to hurt. Like not too bad, but it, like for no reason and that's I know I'm getting old but it, at the same time I hadn't had that happen and then over the next two or three days it got progressively worse to the point where for those two or three days I couldn't get off the floor Kim had to go and buy me um, tiger balm or some weird balm and a heat pack and this is where it gets embarrassing and <laughs> I don't know how much I want to actually say because it's really awkward the pain radiated and shifted from my lower back and it, it, it went it, it moved down <laughs> and uh it stayed down it stayed down <laughs> and that was really weird and i put up with that for a couple days as that got increasingly worse but this new pain is something that i wanted to see a doctor about because it, it wasn't for me that wasn't <laughs> That's not okay. We all good? Anyone laughing? Let's laugh with me, not at me. Let's laugh with me. And the results essentially told me that there was something. And I was so worried about it that a lot of you might have noticed, I don't know, I actually canceled, Kim and I, I canceled our trip to Australia. We were supposed to already have been and gone. Um, but I had to see the doctor, I had to see this guy and it was way more important. And far as I can tell, everything is fine. It's kind of like a wait and see thing. Um, and right now I feel fine. <laughs> Thankfully, <laughs> I asked the doctors, I was like, hey, because we didn't know what it was for the longest time. I was like, hey, can I still do this Ring Fit Challenge? Can I still work out? And they were like, no, no, no. They didn't want me to do too much in case it was 
Hernia, which is really good. But it wasn't that, but we were worried it was that, so they were like no heavy lifting. By the time I could finally do Ring Fit, like, and I was, like, I felt safe in doing it, it was like the start of December, and December's too busy to do the challenge. And the reason why I didn't say anything, like, three days in when I stopped was because so many people were really excited for this challenge, and so many people were doing this challenge, I didn't want to give anyone else a reason to not do the challenge. I wasn't really sure what to do, and it was an embarrassing situation, so I just kind of ghosted it. Well, that was embarrassing. Can we move on? If you're new around here and that's the first thing you ever heard me talk about. Wow. <laughs> the Nintendo Indie Direct World thing. And if you watch that stream with me, you'll know that while we had a lot of fun, I probably looked really tired because I just pulled an all-nighter. So once I put up my free games worth buying video, I went to bed. And this video is a little late, and I'm sorry for that. But it was actually a huge day, because earlier in the day, there was the state of play. PlayStation's Nintendo Direct copycat event, which is its own thing, and was really good. That was probably the best one of those we've had, too. And I want to go through both of these. Let's start with state of play, because it was pretty short, pretty quick, and then go into the Indie Direct, which was amazing. I actually loved it. Well, I guess it wasn't as short as I thought. It was 22 minutes long, so I'm going to have to keep this short. To begin with, it started with Goose Game, which... Oh, man. <laughs> I love Goose Game. It's brilliant. And because it is an indie game, you know, a small team of people, I'm glad to see it getting more love on another system and going out to more people who can now play and enjoy this team's game. However, I kind of liked that it... It kind of felt like a Nintendo Switch game, right? Like, I kind of liked that it was an exclusive. A really cool reason to own a Switch. You don't get to say that often about tiny $20 two-hour games. Like, that's a reason to own a Switch. But it kind of was. Now, not so much. And I'm not going to cover everything in this event because not all of it really super appealed to me. But we did get a look at Spellbreak, which looked really fun. It's a Battle Royale game coming next year. I actually kind of thought Battle Royale games were... <laughs> then we got a look at Super Liminal, and I actually am quite excited for this one. I enjoy mind-bending experiences in video games, and in this game, it uses perspective to mess with your mind. You kind of have to move and shift yourself around the game to see things at different angles, and when you put a piece of the puzzle together, it becomes an actual object. Um, uh, d uh DLC for uh, uh, Kingdom Hearts 3. Oh. <laughs> I know a lot of people are really excited for this. I'm not downplaying it at all. If you're a fan of the game, this DLC looks amazing. I really wanted to love Kingdom Hearts 3 and just for whatever reason, I couldn't get into it. But I'm glad it's getting DLC. It's a weird game to have DLC too, in my opinion. It's like Final Fantasy for me. It's like, I want to buy Final Fantasy. I want to finish the game. I don't want some DLC. I'm done. <laughs> Make another game if you... whatever. This is that uh, obligatory part of the video where I remind everyone that everything I talk about is just my opinion. Okay, can we just... Alright, okay! <laughs> hey, I had hurdy fellas for like three weeks. Yeah, cut me some slack. Weirdly, one of the things I was probably most excited for was the Predator game. So if you don't know what this is, I, I have recently talked a couple times now about that Friday the 13th game with Jason and you play as the, the kids and you try and hide from Jason or you play as Jason and try and demolish the kids. But this Predator game is made by the same people and it's a similar concept, except obviously with Predator. And it looks a lot better. It looks a lot more polished. I think they took a lot of things away from Friday the 13th. They learned a lot and they grew from it and you can see it here. Then Babylon's Fall. I really don't know much or anything about this game other than the gameplay I'm looking at right now. Very hack and slashy. It's a game by Square Enix. It looks fantastic. But honestly, I'm like I'm looking at the gameplay again now for like the fifth time. I'm not meaning to do a live reaction right now, but every time I watch this, I just get transfixed on it. I think that game's gonna be really fun. Then it was the big moment, Resident Evil 3. I think many people, including myself, called this immediately. As soon as Resident Evil 2 came out and everyone freaking went crazy for it, that game was so fun. Definitely one of my best of the year. I loved that game so much. They could honestly flesh it out a lot more and, and make the remake of the third one more fun than the second one. Whereas I would say the original, the second was better than the third, but this could definitely flip it if they do it right. Then weirdly, it ended on Ghost to Tsushima, I say weirdly because the, the, the trailer they ended it on was like half a trailer. The tra I've never seen this before. The trailer had a to be continued at the end and they're gonna finish the trailer at Video Game Awards, which is today as you're watching this, like later tonight. Again, I'm gonna be streaming it. So if you're watching this early in the day, make sure you watch my stream. Hit the bell to find out when I'm going live. Yeah, I don't think they needed to do this little like half a trailer thing because 
even though we don't have to wait long, it was still a little, like, too much of a little teaser. Like, too much of a, well, you really could have just ended on Resident Evil 3, and that would have been awesome. It was a little strange to me, but it is obviously nice, even just a couple days earlier, to hear more about this game, even if we still saw nothing, and what we did see was half of nothing. Because this is a game I am I'm really excited for. Bum, bum, bum. And that was State of Play, and now we can talk about the indie. And I know that's what you wanted the whole time. I mean, some of you maybe didn't. If you want, if you've been watching this video and have a great time thank you so much for not skipping to this part of the video if you skipped all the way to this part of the video man did you miss some weird stuff at the start of this video <laughs> so as a lot of you know I always stream these events whether it's an indie direct or a Nintendo direct or a video game awards I actually I get so hyped up for live events to do around video games I think that just the concept of them in general is amazing the fact that a game at any moment could drop on a system so <clears throat> during my stream at the start of it here is what I said I, I'm not gonna repeat myself again. I love indie directs because I love indies. I love my indies. I have a whole series on my channel about indies on the Switch and this is when I see them for the first time. What I'm hoping to see, uh, I can't say too much. I really shouldn't even say anything. But when you have a little, when you have a juicy little secret, I've been playing a game on my Switch the last few days and it's freaking awesome. Okay, so obviously uh, I, I really wanted to say it, but I wasn't allowed to. I knew that Dauntless was going to be dropping during this event and I'd been playing it for like three days leading up to it. But anyway, we'll get to that when we get to it. The event started with Golf Story. Well, a sports story? I think everyone knows that Golf Story is an incredible game, and I think it puts a lot of people off because it's Golf Story? But for once, a game about golf is actually really fun. It uses golf and golf mechanics in unique and interesting ways, but it's all hidden around a really fun RPG kind of game, where a lot of the mechanics are just golf mechanics. It's not what you think it is, and it's really fun. Either way, whatever, I'm really excited for it, so get on board or get out of here. Right now I'm working on a bunch of videos, and one is upcoming Switch games for next year, and uh, Streets of Rage 4 is one on that video, that, that list that I've been researching and looking into a lot lately and I go I've been really amped up for it so seeing it during this indie direct just made me want it even more it's obviously a sequel a fourth installment into a series that is a really really old school beat em up put <coughs> up Gleam light. <clears throat> Sorry, I kind of like breathed in too quickly and got like a bunch of saliva went down my throat immediately Gleam light. Uh, it looks really good because it looks like Hollow Knight not sure if that was intentional, but it probably was. Either way, I'm gonna play it, because it does look good. Then we had some guy eating pancakes and waffles while talking to us. That's pretty good. Actually, I'll take this moment to say I really liked, well, not so much the impromptu mukbang that this guy put me through, but just in general, starting each of these announcements with the indie team, with the developer, with the people behind actually making the indie games being the ones to introduce it. I think that works a lot better than having hosts. I, th I think the hosts were doing a fine job, but this just, it felt more... Indie. So it was really nice to see that, to kind of be introduced to the people making all of these wonderful games we're going to get to play pretty soon. It was a good idea, Nintendo. Keep doing that. I like that. But anyway, Mukbang Man introduced Bacon Switch, and Kim and I love Overcooked, and just like the previous game looking a lot like Hollow Knight, this game looked a lot like Overcooked. It's fine. I'm actually really excited to play it with Kim, so we'll see. Then next, we have this devilishly handsome man introducing his game, uh, Super Mash? It's a game where you make games. This game is a mishmash, literally, of so many different art styles, so many different kinds of genres of video games, and you can take sprites from one art style and super mash them into another style of video game, and there were so many different kinds of styles and games. I even saw a shoot 'em up splashed in there, obviously I saw platformers. There was even a, a, a game style that looked like The Sims. I really want to play that, that looks really cool. Then <laughs> we had Talos, and Talos actually released a while ago, I think, but now it has this remake including a bunch of extra stuff version? <laughs> that was really hard for me to keep a straight face, by the way. I didn't realize this game looks so pretty. It looks really good. I actually, it kind of looks a little like Mist. You ever played Mist? Anyone? Mist? Mist? Anyone? Mist? Dust. Anybody? No. Dust. 
Then you sank my battleship in uh, Sail Forth, a, a battleship kind of game, kind of like Assassin's Creed Black Flag, which just released on Switch and Sea of Thieves or games kind of like that, but more focused on the ships. But I love games like this, so I'm gonna play it. I'm definitely gonna play it. My little uh, Dauntless prediction that wasn't really a prediction because I knew came true right at this moment during the Indie Direct. They dropped it on Switch. It actually ended up going live about an hour after the event ended, around about the same time as my video. If you didn't watch it, I actually managed to get my review of the game up the moment the game dropped on the eShop, which is always a really cool feeling. So if you didn't watch it, it's my 10 free Switch games. Blah, 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 blah. I reviewed it right at the end. I will say one amendum, one apology. So I actually didn't really know much about this game at all before about a week ago when Nintendo was like, hey, do you want to play Dauntless on Switch? And I was like, yeah, I mean, whatever it is, sure. All I knew was it was a, a big secret and Nintendo put me in contact with an Epic representative, someone at Epic who helped me figure this all out. And to even get into the game, I had to make a new Epic account and link that to a Dauntless account. So this whole time I was just Epic. Like I was like, oh, it's an Epic game. Like, you know, I'm talking to Epic. I made an Epic account. Epic, Epic, Epic. And there actually was a part of me that was like, I don't know if Epic Games counts as an indie. That's a bit of a stretch, Nintendo, but now it makes a lot more sense. I also felt bad for, uh, obviously, the indie team in general. The CEO of Dauntless actually inboxed me and didn't mention that fact. He was just like, I love the video. Thanks so much. Glad for checking out the game. And I was like, oh, I'm glad you liked it. But at that point, I already knew that I had messed up. So I was like... Sorry. <laughs> but, and then we had Murder by Numbers, which is a visual novel game. Personally, I just cannot get into visual novels. Uh, then we had like Boyfriend Dungeon, Boyfriend Stealing, boy, uh, I Love Your Boyfriend. I can't remember what it was called. Oh, and it only gets better because the weapons you can find there transform into cuties and they're single. Forge precious memories with your many loves and use their individual combat styles to clear out all the monsters as you uncover the dungeon secret. That's not not for me. <laughs> uh, the visuals of Dream Caper I thought looked really nice as well as the gameplay. Survivalist sequel. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of the escapists. It didn't really stick that long with me, but I can definitely see the appeal in this game and it definitely has its market. Tony Hawk Bird Edition. Not the skating game I've wanted, but I'll play it. And then they did the whole thanks for watching. Bye bye. See you later. But oh, surprise, surprise. There's one more surprise and that was Axiom Verge 2. That was actually a big surprise. Again, I think Axiom Verge is a fantastic game. It's not one of my personal favorites. Just watching that trailer too, it just gets me hyped up to freaking play it. Like some games really excel at what they do and that game definitely excels well, out of many things, but I, I think the sound design is one of its best qualities. All right, guys, that's all from me. My muscles have whittled away to nothing. I look like a I look fat and like a twig at the same time. I hate looking at myself in the mirror right now and I owe it all to a couple of dangly bits. But hey, what can you do? January is my year. New new year, new me, right? That's what they say, isn't it? Actually, we are so close to getting 800,000 subs. I really want to do it by the end of the year. So close. So subscribe if you haven't already. <laughs> on that subscribe button. <laughs> all right, guys, I love you. Have a fantastic whatever this is for you. I'm working on so much stuff, except, you know, my body, apparently.